this ruling contributes for the enlargement and consolidation of the democratic space and process in Malawi itself, for starters. Uh, this ruling asserts, and it helps to assert beyond Malawi, the independence of the judiciary. We know that in many African countries, this is an area considered of certain deficit. Judicial independence, that is the ability for a court to decide cases free from political influence is an important tenet of democracy governance, basically uh, the democratic space. It's a well-recognized democratic deficit, as I said, and, um, and this impacts on the issue of good governance and practice in many African countries. Because of, uh, of attention, the judges had to be given armed uh, vehicles, for example, we have, we have been armed escort by, by the military all the time. So there was a lot of uh, pressure on them to, uh, to, to make sure that they, uh, uh, they, uh, they rule in a certain way. At the same time, uh, we had the president being, uh, making addresses uh, uh, on television, at public events, already uh, referring to the cases, like for example, claiming that if the court is going to rule in a certain way, then the, 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 the president is not going to accept the, the, the ruling. So in a sense, they were under enormous pressure uh, from all sorts of stakeholders, the civil society, the, the citizens themselves, from the, uh, from the president of the country and rich business people trying to, uh, to bribe them. Importantly for this discussion, the role of civil society organizations as watchdogs and observers in national elections cannot be overstated. The case of Malawi, uh, for example, is a case in point uh, where the Supreme Court and civil society were in fact in alignment as to the importance of ensuring a just result to a very complex uh, election. Uh, but only a strong and capable civil society can effectively play its role. Uh, a strong and capable civil society requires access to basic social services, health, education, jobs, access to information, civic education, inclusion. In many African countries, unfortunately, these are areas where many deficits are still observed, where many people have actually been le left behind. The, uh, the civil society groups, uh, especially an organization called the Human Rights Defenders Coalition, came in when they noticed that uh, the youths were going on the streets on their own, uh, and there are all these landing battles between the police and, uh, and, uh, and youths in the cities, but also in, uh, in, in towns uh, and villages. So when they came in, they won legitimacy in the eyes of the people because they had clear goals and they had a clear strategy. They, they immediately demanded the resignation of a uh, chairperson and the list of the management of the Malawi Electoral Commission, the electoral body. And, they, and later on, it, it became very clear that by, by pushing uh, for, for departure of his, uh, of his officials, they were also uh, demanding that the, uh, the elections should be uh, 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 renewed. But I do believe that all development partners uh, need to learn lessons, not just in terms of the immediate um, uh, engagement, let's say, with the incumbents and with the governments uh, from the perspective of, um, you know, the value of ensuring free and fair elections, uh, but also in terms of uh, upholding the result of uh, litigation. Uh, there is often litigation in courts. Um, uh, all opposition parties are going, to, are going to contest the results of elections, sometimes with good cause, sometimes with less. But basically, there is a process. There is a judicial process that guarantees that at the end of the day, uh, observer missions uh, can be aligned with what the law says uh, about what are free and fair elections in actually declaring that the elections have been free and fair.
sectors. So it seems that it's becoming increasingly difficult uh, for national governments to ignore the growing voice and the growing strength of civil society. Uh, and certainly um, electoral uh, processes and um, electoral uh, acts are a good time to assess also uh, to what extent what governments say about civil society is what government actually uh, do in terms of the inclusion, in terms of the recognition uh, of the voice uh, and of the opinions um, of civil society for what is actually important for the life uh, and development of the nation. So I think from that uh, perspective, it's hugely important or what happened here or, and it's, it's ramifications across uh, the continent, continent would be great. And I hope even uh, in various uh, military barracks uh, from uh, across the continent, people will be able to see what uh, our generals did and say, maybe you can learn one or two from uh, the military in Malawi and stand on the side of the people for once and stand on the side of the constitution. I think that will also embolden civil society uh, across across the country. We have already heard in uh, colleagues from uh, civil society from, from Zambia, from Uganda, referring to the Malawi scenario, what, we, what happened in Malawi about ensuring that uh, if you want to change, all the stakeholders are, are working together. I think that that's the, uh, the long lasting uh, lesson, I think, which mo most people we, we across the continent uh, and beyond might, might take from Malawi. 